What's up, everybody? Adam here again at engineeringsolve.com. I got another tool here for you uh, for a simple lifting lug analysis, uh, say for a pressure vessel or a structural member, structural frame, uh, anything like that. So you can find this at engineeringsolve.com uh, under the machine design category. It's free for download, as always. Uh, go check it out. So let's just run through it here real quick. I'll show you what it does. So here, uh, depending on where you are, you can select English or metric units uh, in pounds or newtons. So let's say you have a lifting force on a lug. Let's say you have a you have to figure out your lifting force depending on how many lugs you have, uh, what the size of your uh, equipment is essentially. Uh, so this is the, your F per lug. And then your minimum desired factor of safety is two. Let's say, uh, let's say we want three. Minimum, minimum safety factor is three. <clears throat> and then we have, uh, let's say a six inch wide lug with a one and a quarter inch thickness, the four inch hole diameter here, the hole diameter, the uh, two and a half inch pin diameter, uh, center line distance from here to here should be probably half of your width. So let's set that at three. And your lug distance would be here to here. That would probably be uh, six minus four divided by two is one. So yeah, that's about right. Four, and you can move it a little bit closer if the hole is offset. Let's say it's a little bit closer to the edge here, but let's just leave it at one. Let's just assume that the hole is concentric with the shape of the lug. And then based on your material for a carbon steel material, uh, you have ultimate strength, shear strength, bearing strength for the lug, and then bearing strength for the pin. Let's say those are equivalent. And then your modulus of elasticity for uh, carbon steel. Now moving down, what it will do is it will calculate your, your factor of safety for each of a norm, uh, typical lifting lug um, failure criterion. So in this case, we're looking at the tension across the net section, which is these two ride lines. We're just pulling these two red lines apart uh, like a tensile test, essentially. So it's giving you your net tensile area for these two red lines uh, with the load uh, going upwards. And then it gives you your ultimate tensile load and then your factor of safety. And then the, the equations here as well. So you can you can check my work. If you do notice an issue, please email me, adam at engineeringsolve.com, and I will uh, profusely apologize and uh, update the tool and let everybody know so you can get a new tool. Okay, so moving on, uh, double shear failure. Uh, here, you have two shear planes. These are about, some people say 45 degrees offset from the center of the pin some say 40 degrees. I've just assumed 45 degrees for simplicity of calculation, or sorry, 40 degrees, cosine of 40 degrees. Uh, so here you have the shear plane loss length Z, which is based on a uh, round lug. If you have a square lug, you can just put in zero, but then you'll lose the formula. Uh, and then you can see here as well, the loss length uh, shortens the shear plane and then your factor safety is two. But if you have a square lug, your Z is zero and your factor, you have a little bit extra shear area and your factor safety goes up slightly. So, but if you, you can do that if you want. These tools are unprotected uh, and you just have to remember what you're doing and keep that in mind. Uh, so then you have your net shear plane length here. 
your shear plane area. These are all calculated internally. Ultimate shear load, as well as your factor of safety is two, which is less than three. So you may wanna keep an eye on that. And then um, note here, same thing as what I said before, Assuming that the lug has a rounded shape, it's conservative if the actual lug is rectangular. So that's basically your Z variable here, and you can override it if you want. Uh, moving on, the third, uh, norm, the third common uh, failure mode for lifting lugs is bearing failure between the interaction between the lifting lug and the pin in this red area right here. So here you have a simple bearing area that you're looking at, uh, the diameter of the pin times the thickness, and then the ultimate bearing load is here, the minimum of these, sorry, these, uh, your bearing stress times your area of your bearing, and the factor of safety is uh, 4.69. So it's pretty strong for in this case, so that's not really a concern. Uh, again, here you have your hoop tension single plane failure. So you're just single plane value, just tearing this out, tearing it right through. Uh, tensile area, again, is a little simpler. Uh, ultimate tensile load, you have a single plane now, so your area is smaller than before. Uh, so that hurts you a little bit on your factor of safety. It's a little bit lower, 1.25. It still probably won't fail, but it's not, it's not where you would like it to be at 3. And then finally, you have your out of plane buckling which is uh, highly dependent on the thickness of your lug itself. Uh, if you have a very thin lug, you know it may buckle side to side, uh, which is obviously not good either. Um, and then you have the associated factor of safety for that as well. And then you have a little summary down here at the bottom, uh, and then a statement saying whether the, the, whether the lug is safe or not. It says the lifting lug is safe, but does not meet user's minimum factor of safety requirement. So if any of these factors of safety are less than one, let's say we have a very high load. Let's double the load, just for example. And we scroll down here. We have factor safety of one, which is not good. Factor safety less than one, which is not good. And then here, there's a summary as well. So these are both red notifying that they're unacceptable. And then your statement changes as well. Lifting lug is not adequately designed and will likely fail. Redesign is necessary based on these factor of safety is less than one. And also if the factor of safety is less than one, the whole area of the safety criterion will change to red and will have red text. Now if the factor of safety is between one and the value that you specify, in this case 3, is if it's between 1 and 3, the whole area will change to yellow. And if it is safe, let's say we have a lower requirement and we have a lower load. Back to the original load. If it's above the value that you desire, factor of safety, it will turn green for good. So the objective here is to have everything green um, and then lifting lug is safe but not meet user's minimum factor of safety requirement because you have these two are uh, less than two as well as this one is right at two. So I guess that is acceptable. Um, we, let's say we put 1.999. 1.999. So then we're good, you know, too. Okay. Still not good on these two. Uh, so that's it. That's about it. Uh, the reference here is, of course, uh, Shigley's Mechanical Engineering Design textbook. It's a great reference. I recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend that book. It's very dense. Uh, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. So yeah, check it out. Uh, EngineeringSolve.com. Click on the machine design tab, you can find this as well as other lifting lug uh, tools eventually. Uh, yeah, check it out. Thanks.